Isaac Ike Haxton fell in love with strategy games early in life. After chess and Magic the Gathering, he discovered poker and finally realized his childhood dream of playing a game for a living. His 10-year career has been filled with many unexpected twists and turns, but throughout it all, he's never lost his competitive drive. With over $5 million in live tournament earnings and over $3 million in online cash game winnings, Isaac has proven himself to be one of the best professionals of his generation. I was born in New York City and grew up in Westchester. My mom is a psychiatrist and my father is a poet and an English professor. I definitely grew up in a pretty cerebral and academic environment. My mom had just graduated from medical school and my dad was a junior professor at Sarah Lawrence University. My parents were definitely very serious about education and expressed its importance to me early on. I was very close to my parents growing up. When I was very young, I started playing a lot of games with my father. Isaac and his father started out playing simple games like checkers and go fish. But when Isaac turned four, his father introduced him to chess, a game that would capture his imagination for years to come. We would handicap the games where he would start down a few pieces, and we would play with that handicap until I won three consecutive games, and then we would move to a smaller handicap, and certainly by the time I was 10, I was winning pretty consistently. When Isaac was six, he began competing regularly in local chess tournaments. That sort of competition really captured my interest right away. If there was a big chess tournament coming up, that was all I could think about for the weeks leading up to it, and I would be studying openings and game planning. I absolutely loved it. But Isaac's passion would only take him so far. My chess career, as it were, sort of plateaued when I was 10 or so. I found myself in this situation where I was, by a very large margin on both sides, the second best player in the county. There was one dude who I never ever beat, and I never ever lost to anybody else. And going to tournaments got to be pretty tedious. Isaac's interest in chess may have tapered off, but his interest in strategy games was only just beginning. It was only a matter of time before he found a suitable replacement. Around the time that chess was beginning to lose its interest for me, I got really into a card game called Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering is a collectible trading card game with fantasy elements. Strategically, it's often been described as a combination of poker and chess. I would play in a couple of local tournaments a week. I would spend a lot of my free time reading what I could about strategy online, playing online, talking to my friends who played the game. I became, yeah, absolutely obsessed with it. At 14, Isaac set his sights on the professional magic circuit. For an elite few, it offered the opportunity to play a game for a living. A dream come true for young Isaac. I definitely considered that I could be one of these people. I was friends with guys who were doing that. I thought it would be fun to spend all my time traveling around playing magic. But even on the professional circuit, earning a living through magic was difficult. Isaac and his friends soon found a way to use their skills in a different, more lucrative game. A lot of the guys I knew through Magic started playing poker before me. A lot of them were a few years older than I was. I think mostly they got started by going to the local casino outside Syracuse. One of them described it to me as, well, it, it's a lot like Magic, only the other guys aren't trying to win, and you're playing for a lot of money. I was like, oh, that, that sounds pretty good. I think I could get into that. When Isaac turned 18, he joined his magic friends on a trip to the local casino. As soon as I started, I thought, this game is awesome. I can't get enough. In fall of 2004, Isaac attended Brown University, where he majored in computer science, his first step towards a career as a research scientist. 
When I got there, I pretty quickly found some other kids in my dorm who were interested in poker, and we started playing little $5 and $10 sit and goes. The dorm room poker games would often last all night as poker fever swept the nation. This was 2004, the year after Moneymaker won the main event, right toward the beginning of the big online poker boom. So it was a great time to get started in the game. Isaac soon moved his play online where he grew his $50 bankroll to tens of thousands playing mid-stakes limit hold'em. Amongst the poker crowd, he was the talk of the campus. Little did he know, his reputation would soon lead him to the most important encounter of his life. Oh, love's a crazy game, or so they say. Isaac and I met in school. When I first met him, I was dating someone else, one of his good friends, actually. He played poker casually and uh, was trying to get me into it. He thought I would be good at it. He was very impressed with my success at the game and got the idea in his head that I ought to teach Zoe how to play poker. He sort of encouraged me to get to know Isaac and, and learn from him. And by then I already had a bit of a crush on him, and so I would sort of use that as an excuse to go hang out in his dorm room and watch him play and stare at his beautiful shoulders. <laughs> I was definitely attracted to her right away. There was a bit of tension between us, even though she was still dating my good friend. Eventually, that relationship fizzled out. Isaac and Zoe didn't see much of each other, but they stayed in touch online. Two months later, Isaac finally made his move. It's Valentine's Day. I'm sitting at my computer in my dorm room talking to Zoe on Instant Messenger, and we're basically commiserating about how much we both hate Valentine's Day. Isn't this so annoying? All of the couples who are so pleased with themselves. Don't you hate Valentine's Day? Yeah, I hate Valentine's Day. It's the worst. Could really go for a drink. Well, I have a bottle of gin at my apartment. <laughs> Do you want to come over? And basically the rest is history. Zoe brought new energy to Isaac's life and poker was going better than ever. Unfortunately, his studies were an entirely different story. Spring semester of my junior year, I kind of hit a wall with computer science. I would go to the computer lab to work on a project and sit down and my mind would just go blank. I would stare at the screen, and an hour would go by, and I would just still be staring at a blank screen. By the end of his junior year, Isaac had failed all his classes. With his future in research science looking more and more uncertain, he realized he needed a new plan. It was around this time that there was this movement in Washington to crack down on online poker. In September 2006, Congress passed the Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act. No one knew exactly what kind of impact it would have on the industry, but suddenly Isaac's future in online poker didn't look so certain either. I started thinking, I maybe have one year left to get as much money out of this as I can. I think that if I devote myself full-time to online poker for a year, I can make about a million dollars. The big dolomit cash games were very clearly the best place to be making the money at this point. I sought out people who were better than me and I got professional coaching and that was huge for me. After having started off at 2-4, within two months I was playing 10-20 and my goal of making a million a year seemed absolutely within reach. By the end of 2006, Isaac was well on his way towards his million dollar goal. His cash game results were impressive by any standards, but his biggest boost would come from somewhere totally unexpected. That fall, I decided that I would play some satellites for the PCA. The Poker Stars Caribbean Adventure is a destination poker tournament held each year in the Bahamas an aspect that made it one of the most popular tournaments on the circuit. I was kind of thinking of it as satelliting into a fun vacation for me and my girlfriend. You know, he wasn't expecting to win. Uh, you know, he was expecting to bust out on the first day, and you know, then we would go swimming in the ocean, hang out at the pool. 
by the second day of the tournament, I was a uh, runaway chip leader, so I was getting asked for interviews on break. I'm excited, yeah, I like the tournament. He just kept winning pots, he just kept winning. He was, it was crazy. And then, you know, and then it was okay, he's made the final table. Hi everyone, welcome to the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton alongside Vince Van Patten and we're at the beautiful Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island in the Bahamas for the final table of PokerStars.net's Caribbean Poker Adventure. All six players, 28 years or younger, and the youngest of them all is the whopping chip leader, 21-year-old Isaac Haxton from Boston. Going into the final table, I had more than half the chips out of the six-handed table. I mean, he had that huge chip lead, and I was very confident. And, you know, I just thought he was the best player, period. You know, Isaac's is the smartest, he's the best, he's gonna win. It was a much bigger stage than I'd ever been on before, but I kind of had this feeling that my whole life has been training for this. Already to 80,000. I'd been running so hot throughout the entire tournament, I felt like winning was a foregone conclusion. Isaac's good fortune continued as his fellow competitors were eliminated one by one. My stack pretty steadily increased throughout the day until we got down to heads up. We are down to heads up action. Our current chip leader is Isaac Haxton. He's got 13.9 million in chips, about a three to one chip lead over Ryan Dowd, who's sitting on about 4.9 million in chips. Once we got heads up, things started going much less smoothly. So it all comes down to the river. Let's take a peek. It's an ace. Ryan Dowd has double up. And that's just that quick. We've got a new chip leader for the first time tonight. And look at the stunned look by Isaac Haxton. That's when I started to like have almost a panic reaction. Like I like started hyperventilating a little bit. I had to like sit down and put my head between my knees. I was very emotional. So Ryan Dow taking down yet another nice pot. Isaac continued his downward spiral as doubt seemed to win every pot. All seemed lost until a single hand turned everything around. Well, the queen of clubs comes off. As the cards lie, Ryan's got the best hand with the seven high. 700,000. And he bets 700,000. Raise. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Ryan, with almost as bad a hand, says raise. Well, this is incredible. He is raising it, gonna make it $2 million. <laughs> with absolute Garfunkel. The first thing that went through my head was, damn, I guess I lose this hand. He's got the worst two cards you could have at this moment. After spending a while with my head down, mourning the loss of this big pot, I start thinking, I, I don't know if I buy this. I don't think he has anything. He certainly didn't check the turn with a straight. He didn't check the turn with two pair. None of this is really adding up to convince me he has a good hand. Maybe I can just bluff shove here. Re-raise all in. Oh, he's going to go in. Wow, Vince, he's done it. He's pulled the oh, 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 chips. You're gonna, you're gonna like when that's on TV. To this day, that's easily my favorite single hand of poker I've ever played. Unfortunately, the thrill from Isaac's bluff was short-lived. He ultimately finished in second place, a disappointing result until he considered the prize money. I won about 860,000 for finishing second. That put me over 90% of the way to my million dollars in a year goal and I got home from the tournament, ran good online for a week, and was there. In 2008, Isaac and Zoe moved to Las Vegas. They heard about a condo development that catered especially to poker players, and decided it was the perfect place for Isaac to take his poker career more seriously. Panorama Towers is a high-rise development right off of the Vegas Strip. It's an exceptionally convenient place to live if you are playing live poker in Vegas. There was a time when it was essentially completely populated by poker players and strippers. Um, <laughs> and it was just a weird, weird place to live. Panorama Towers was home to a vibrant poker social scene where Isaac befriended many of the game's elite players. 
Together, they created a new world filled with online poker, fine dining, and all-night parties. I had a really good time in those few years in Vegas. It was kind of the start of my adult life, away from college, making lots of money and with lots of fun stuff to spend it on around me. Their high-stakes, carefree lifestyle soon attracted the attention of the mainstream media. I don't know quite how we came to their attention, but Maxim decided they wanted to write an article about the poker players of Panorama Towers. Davey, the guy who wrote that article, did a really good job capturing what that scene was all about and how our group of friends operated. It was really wonderful to have all these friends around. We were all in this together and you know, living this totally bizarre Vegas life. And it was this joint experience that we all had and, and, and we became very close. For Isaac and his friends, Panorama Towers was a party that never ended. It represented the kind of freedom where anything was possible, even the ability to play a game for a living. For three years, they were living the dream but no dream lasts forever. In early 2011, I was at a great point in my life, both poker-wise and otherwise. I was on a giant upswing. I felt like I was just booking a 100K win every day. He got some momentum and, and you know, some new people were playing him and some people who hadn't been playing him started playing him and he was on a serious winning streak and, and putting in a lot of hours and really enjoying playing poker and then boom. On April 15th, 2011, the U.S. Department of Justice shut down online poker in America. It felt like the sky was falling. I mean, it, it, the sky fell. It, it was really the end of something, you know, of an era of, of that situation. Black Friday was definitely the death knell for the Panorama Towers online poker player culture. Yeah, there was definitely a, a, a sense of loss. You know, having to accept that that time was ending, you know, would soon be over, is now over. In order to keep playing online poker for a living, it became clear that we were gonna have to move abroad. One afternoon we were sitting on the couch in our pajamas talking about the various legal hoops we were gonna to have to jump through, I said, you know, th this would be a lot easier if we were just married. Do you wanna get married? <laughs> then he apologized for being kind of abrupt and, and not very romantic in his proposal. Um, but, you know, we talked it through and it was the obvious choice. We had a big, beautiful, formal, lavish wedding, uh, you know, with our, our whole family and a lot of our friends came and, um, and that was a really incredible experience. It was a lot of fun to have everyone from Panorama back together for the celebration and it was a lot of fun to introduce my friends from different stages of my life to each other. It felt sort of important to have our families and all of our friends, you know, all together at once, meeting each other and joining us in, in, in celebrating our marriage. The celebration gave friends and family the opportunity to see Isaac and Zoe one last time before they began their new adventure. Two weeks later, they moved to Malta. Malta is a beautiful country with 
7,000 years of history. It's a really relaxing environment that's very conducive to getting a lot of play in. I really enjoy living here. The food here is awesome, the weather is awesome. I really like the Mediterranean sensibility of not working too hard and enjoying life. Black Friday has been a bit of a blessing in disguise for us. We had always talked about wanting to travel the world, and that is one of the best things about playing poker for a living, especially playing online poker for a living. You have almost unlimited freedom to work when you want and not work when you don't want, and go anywhere you want and work from there if you feel like it, or take time off if you'd prefer that. And that was something we had taken almost no advantage of while we were living in Vegas. Meeting Isaac, falling in love with him, getting wrapped up in, in, in this lifestyle has presented me with so many wonderful opportunities to see and do and learn things that I never would have otherwise. And it's great. <laughs> it is very hard to say what the future holds for Zoe and me. I have every intention of continuing to play online poker for a living, and what it takes to do that is an ever-evolving question. Oh, thanks.